Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I needed to make a video for you guys that was about something enjoyable, something that I liked to do, something that brought me happiness. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing with you the perfumes that I reach for the most. My, I wouldn't say they're my all-time favorite perfumes because I have other perfumes that I love, 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 but I just don't find them to be super easy reaches, but that doesn't mean I don't love them or still wear them. But these are the ones that I find to be the easiest reaches. These are the ones I reach for the most out of everything in my collection and I truly love them so if you guys follow me on Instagram and even on my community post here on YouTube I've been sort of and I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news or like gloom and doom but I've been focusing too much I think or maybe the right amount on some things that are happening in um, mainstream media at the moment. I'm not going to get into it in too much detail in today's video because I don't want this video to be about that, but I do think that it's important to be aware of things that are going on in the world. I think it's important to not be blind and blissfully unaware of certain things because if we have a voice and if we are in a position of power or a position where we can make an impact I think it's important to do so and raising awareness about certain things I think is important as well so if you guys want to know what I'm talking about I will leave links to videos in the description that are videos that I've watched over the last little while that have really just I didn't even know honestly that this was all going on I think we all kind of live in our own little bubble at times and while it's a good thing to focus on what brings you joy and happiness it's also important to remain aware of things that are going on so so anyway, uh, in today's video, you guys, when I started filming, we were having a thunderstorm. So if you hear thunder or rain in the first part of the video, hopefully it will be like ASMR or something because it definitely was booming pretty loud when I first started filming. And then of course, by the time I finished, the skies had cleared up and now there's no more rain, but hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. Um, make yourself a cup of coffee, sit down and hang out with me for a little bit. Let's try to focus on positive things that bring us happiness. And I would love if you would share with me down below as well your favorite, your most reached for perfumes in your whole collection. I also want to give a shout out to Haley Hewitt. She is such a doll. I love her. Um, she recently did a video where she actually decluttered all of her perfumes except for seven. And you guys know I've done this before, but I fell back into the habit of collecting again and growing again and buying again. And that is a cycle that I'm trying to break. I think that it is a really nice thing to have only a few fragrances that you absolutely love so if you guys are interested in checking out her top seven that she settled for not settled for but chose um do check out her video i will put a link down to her channel down below and yeah with that out of the way you guys let's get started in today's video before I get started in today's video, you guys, I just wanted to show you this cute little bubble dog. Um, I posted a photo on my Instagram, I think, I don't know what it was of, but I think the bubble dog was in there. And so many people wrote me and they said, that is such a cute decoration, where did you get it? I got it from Amazon. Um, it really wasn't very expensive at all. Um, I think it's just really cute. I'm not sure if I'm like super into the vibe. I usually go for a little bit more, I don't know. It's, it's a little out of my my decor style usually, but I think it's really cute. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. And if anybody's interested, I will put the link to where I got it from. I got it from the Canadian Amazon, but you can get it, I'm sure from like probably even more options from the US Amazon. Yeah, pretty cute. Why not just show you my shelf in my office while we're at it? Um, so this shelf, why not do it? Why not do a mini tour of my office real quick? Um, this shelf is from uh, Amazon as well. It's a kind of a, I don't know, it's like a contemporary like shelf. <laughs> um, I should really be a salesperson. Look at how good I am at describing things. Um, and then I got this little abstract piece of wooden knot decor from Amazon as well. This book is from everything here is from Amazon except for um, one item from HomeSense. This cute little vase of a woman's silhouette, which I think is really nice because it's actually speckled. This is from Amazon as well. These flowers are from HomeSense and I still have the tag because I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep them, but I'm really liking them. So they're kind of a faux rose. And then this, this actually came from a local um, pharmacy where they sell home decor and then the dog was from Amazon. But yeah, I just had a couple people asking me about that. So I thought I would share that in today's video. All right guys, so like I said, if you can hear thunder or rain in the background or potentially later some hay, hay, hail, <laughs> um, just 
try to ignore it or hopefully it's relaxing or something because I can't do anything about it and we have been getting a lot of rain lately which I'm not going to complain about because there's a lot of places in this country that could use rain right now so in no particular order the first perfume that I would say is probably one of my easiest reaches is definitely Mon Guerlain this is also one of my biggest dents in a bottle and really I should be through this bottle already I should have already completed this bottle but because I've been trying so many perfumes over the last few years um, I just haven't been able to give as much dedication to any one bottle as I would have liked. But as you can see, I have a pretty good dent going in this bottle. I do have a backup. This is one perfume that I will always, always, always have in my collection. And I think it's worth having backups because if they ever do decide they want to reformulate it, God forbid, um, I would be really heartbroken. It's such a beautiful fragrance. I don't think that they're going to. Guerlain is such a high quality company and I think they know what makes them high quality. They're so special. The Guerlain perfumes are so special. They almost may as well be a niche house in and of themselves because they have such high quality, beautiful fragrances. Anyways, this is a lovely... Sorry about the thunder. I think it's, I think the sun's coming out. This is a really lovely lavender, um, kind of a licorice sandalwood vanilla fragrance. Everybody always says lavender vanilla, but it's so much more than that. It's just stunning. It's very feminine. It's just very feminine and very elegant and I absolutely love it and I always get compliments when I wear this one. One of my favorites for sure. So this is definitely one of my easiest reach reaches. I often think that if I had to calm my collection down to only one or two perfumes or even one perfume, I could wear this one every single day and I would be perfectly happy. Like this perfume never bothers me. It's always a good choice, no matter what the occasion, no matter what the weather, this is always a great choice. So this one is definitely one of my easiest reaches in my perfume collection. The next easiest reach, or I'm not really going in any particular order, but one of my other easiest reaches is Olympia. You can see I've put a pretty big dent in this bottle as well. This bottle is actually almost three years old. This was one of the very first bottles that I purchased um, when I first started getting into perfume. And um, it, was, it was one of my very first blind buy successes and I really, really love it. It's a salty vanilla fragrance. And there is something about this perfume that is very sexy. Uh, very appealing, very compliment getting, very enjoyable. I always, always enjoy this perfume, you guys, and it lasts for such a long time. And you know those perfumes that when you wear them, they're great the first day you wear them, but when you smell them on the second or third day, that's when they really come to life. And I've had that happen where I've had like a lounge shirt or a pajama shirt that wasn't dirty. So I've worn it a few days in a row. Obviously, I'm not going to wash my shirts every single day. That's just wasteful. But um, on those shirts, when you smell this perfume for like the second or third day, it is just so heavenly to put that shirt on and to smell the perfume still in the fabric. And at that point, it's become like a soft vanilla and it's just beautiful. Um, it's super sexy, great for dates, boyfriend loves it. I love this perfume. There's been times I've thought about decluttering it like momentarily where I was like, mm, I don't really know if that's my taste anymore because it is kind of a loud perfume and it's almost obnoxiously loud because it's so strong, but it is just one of the best. It's my favorite salty vanilla I've ever tried. So yeah, that one is Olympia. My next perfume, this one actually has greater than 50% dent, which is rare for me. Like I don't think, aside from this one in Olympia, I don't think I have a bottle that has greater than 50% missing, which says something. <laughs> so this is Kelly Vanilla 28. And I think the reason that this is such an easy reach perfume is because it's a basic vanilla. It's just a basic, um, easy to reach for, beautiful, com comforting, cozy, all occasion appropriate, enjoyable vanilla fragrance. This one has this one has um, vanilla orchid, brown sugar, um, amber, amber woods, I think is in here. And it's just really, really enjoyable and very feminine and very pretty. And you can tell this bottle is super old because the juice has turned very dark. And I still love this perfume just as much today as when I first got it. This is an old bottle. I have a backup of this one. In fact, I think I have two backups of this one because for a while there, they were sold out constantly. And I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get another bottle if they sold out. So I got two bottles um, and I'm okay with that because it's a great layering perfume. And it's one that I think I will have in my collection 
indefinitely. I don't think I will ever not like Kali Vanilla 28. Another one that remains a very highly reached for perfume in my collection is Gold Couture from uh, Juicy Couture. And this one, you guys, if you know, you know. I've had this one forever. This is my favorite from the Viva La Juicy line. I like quite a few of them in some ways, but this is my favorite. I think it's because this one is dominant in caramel. So this one has berries. Yeah, this one has berries, white flowers, and um, caramel in it, and it's super, super sexy. This one I don't wear on a regular basis um, during the day, but this is my go-to for date nights, which, or any night that my boyfriend and I are getting together to watch a movie and, you know, we're planning to be close, um, this is that perfume that I grab for, just nine times out of ten. The odd time I will reach for another sexy perfume, but if I want something that's just um, an immediate hit that always you know, always works and never disappoints. It's this perfume. I don't know what it is about it. There's just something that is really enjoyable and I don't know. I just love it. So yeah, this one is one that's a very easy reach. I would never wear this on a regular, like during the day going to work, obviously, or going to, not that there's anything wrong with it if you do that, but I think that this perfume has a time and a place and I think it's just very appropriate for, you know, intimate occasions. So that is Gold Couture. Believe it or not, you guys, Baccarat Rouge has become a fairly easy reach for me. Now there still isn't much missing and sometimes I do think that I don't need this in my collection. I think this was one of those perfumes that I sort of talked myself into liking because of social media and I tried it over and over and over until finally I started to like it. Um, in hindsight, I can see that that's what happened. However, However, when I do go up and smell this perfume in a store, it's an obvious hit to me. Like it's obviously one of the best ones at the perfume counter. So it is a really nice fragrance. Um, and you can see that there is a bit of a dent. I can't believe it, but I have a bit of a dent in my Baccarat Rouge. Um, so I have actually been reaching for this and I wear this to the gym quite a bit. And I know a lot of people would say that's crazy. It projects too much. Why would you wear it to the gym? You're going to choke people out. You guys haven't been to my gym, okay? <laughs> uh, my gym is not like other gyms. I do not live in a large center where there's like an LA fitness or something where there's hundreds of people and they're all within very close proximity. My gym is pretty small. It's pretty low key. There's only ever maybe 15, 20 people at a time in my gym and they're all at least 10 feet away. So I don't have to worry too much. I want people to be able to smell my perfume. What's the point of wearing perfume if people can't smell it, right? So I'm okay with this projecting and creating a lovely little trail behind me. That's exactly the point. That is why people wear this perfume. And um, I like to be that girl who smells good. You know, when I walk past somebody, I like them to be like, oh, that girl smells really good. Yes, she does. And she is wearing Baccarat Rouge. <laughs> so this is, um, I don't know, sometimes it annoys me. I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes it annoys me, but this is a sweet, kind of a resinous cotton candy um, type of perfume. It's kind of hard to describe. It smells very similar to Ariana Grande's Cloud. Yeah, so this one, believe it or not, has just become an easy reach. I don't know, just if I don't know what to wear and I just need something that I know is going to smell good, I will just reach for this one because I know that it's gonna smell good and it's kind of a no-brainer. I honestly can't say it's my favorite. Like, I can't say I love this one the way that I love Mon Guerlain. I definitely don't. I don't enjoy the scent of this coming off of myself the way that I enjoy Olympia or um, Luby Rouge or House of Siage Tiara or something like that. I definitely have other perfumes that I like better, but this one has become an easy reach. So yeah. Another perfume that has still been an easy reach for me is my Victor and Roth Flower Bomb. And if you guys watch my channel, you know the history with this one. I wore this perfume non-stop for years. It was my signature scent for a couple of years and I still love this perfume just as much now as I did when I first got it. It is a little sweet. Like I will be honest, sometimes I find it too sweet. I think years ago I didn't notice how sweet it was, um, but it is definitely one of my sweeter fragrances. Um, but this is still an easy reach for me, especially for every day, any day that I'm going to be spending the day with my partner. Maybe we're going for lunch, going to a movie, hanging out in the evening. I wouldn't wear this one by myself at home. I just, 
I don't wear perfume a lot by myself at home. I, I, I very much use perfume as part of my ensemble, part of my like outfit when I'm actually leaving the house or have something to do. That's just my perception of it. Um, I don't feel a need to wear perfume at home very much. And if I do, it's probably going to be a body spray or something comforting and cozy, kind of like Mongerlan. That I, that I can wear at home. But usually if I'm going out and um, usually if I'm going to wear a perfume like this, it's because I'm going out and I actually have somewhere to go. And I want this to be part of my look. You know what I mean? Because this is part of your outfit. Um, so this one's a really sweet, kind of a spicy tea fragrance. And I still reach for this one quite a bit. It still remains a go-to for date nights. So Another one that is a fairly easy reach, and this is less of an easy reach for me than some of the other ones I've mentioned, and there's a few more coming up that are still easier reaches, but this one you can see is a 100 ml bottle and there is a little bit missing, which is pretty good for me. And this is Clean Skin from Clean Reserve. So this one is actually a very easy reach for me for work because technically where I work, we're not really supposed to wear perfumes. Um, so the most that I ever want to smell like at work is like clean and like I have a really beautiful air, fresh, air freshener, um, what do you call it? Fabric freshener, fabric softener, or like I've maybe put on a really nice lotion that morning, but nothing stronger than that. I don't ever want to come across like I'm actually wearing a perfume because um, I don't want to choke people out or give people headaches or anything like that. So I go very soft if I ever do one, wear one to work. And this one is one that you can definitely get away with in more sensitive environments because it doesn't smell like a perfume. This fragrance literally smells like your skin, but just clean and sweet and beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. It's one of my favorite fragrances. I love the way that this smells. It has this um, sweet, subtle skin scent, but at the same time, I think there's lavender in here as well, perhaps. Um, it's kind of like relaxing, cozy, a little bit sensual, a tiny bit animalic, but not in a dirty way, just in the sense of smelling very natural and very like you. Um, there's a little bit of salt in here, there's praline, there's musk. It's just beautiful. It literally just smells like, it smells like you're not wearing a perfume, but you just naturally smell amazing. That's what it is. And I have gotten endless compliments, you guys. Like I can't tell you how many compliments I get when I wear this perfume. Um, and nobody has ever said, oh, it's too strong or it gives a headache or anything like that. It's always just, you smell really nice. And people have a smile on their face when they tell me. So it's not like it's bothering people, you know? And I feel like especially in healthcare when a lot of things don't smell that great, <laughs> Um, it's nice to have somebody walk into the room who actually smells really nice. I mean, it uh, brings joy to people, I think, in some small capacity. The next one that is a pretty easy reach for me is Black Opium Le Parfum. This is the newest um, Black Opium flanker, and you can't see where the mark is in this bottle, but if you could see it, I would say it's probably about like right there maybe. I had been powering through this bottle for a while. I was wearing it quite a lot. So I actually slowed down on it a little bit, but this one remains a very, very easy reach for me. This is like the other black opiums, except it's more vanillic. Yeah, this one is more dominant in vanilla and it also has solar notes in it, I believe. So this is almost like a warmer, cozier, more sunshiny, summery version of the original black opiums and also lots of vanilla, way heavier on the vanilla. It's less cloying. It's less I don't want to say immature, but it's more mature smelling than the other black opiums. It's not so much like a club perfume or something you're going to wear to go out at night for drinks with your girlfriends when you're in your 20s. It's less like that and more like just a beaut just a really enjoyable, relaxing vanilla perfume, and I just really, really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I love the way that it smells. I love the way that my bedroom smells after I've worn this and I come back home, I walk into my bedroom, and I can still smell this in my room. Um, I love the way it smells on your shirt a few hours later. Just really, really enjoyable. And yeah, definitely a very non-challenging, easy perfume for me to reach for. So haven't been wearing it as much lately, but this one is definitely a very easy reach for me. And if I had to currently, if I had to currently take my perfume collection and cut it back to 10, I think I would have to keep this one in there because it is just that easy for me. And I ultimately, if I had only 10 perfumes, I would want all of my perfumes to be very easy reaches, not something that 
was a special occasion or that I had to challenge myself to wear. And Black Opium La Parfum is not challenging. It's a great one. It's definitely my favorite release from Black Opium so far. Another one that is a pretty easy reach for me is Poison Girl Eau de Parfum from Dior. I always tell people I do recommend this one over the EDT just because this one has more staying power and more body to it. The EDT is a little bit more citrusy, orangey, fresh in a sense, um, almost like a zesty, summertime gingery vibe to it, where this one is a little bit heavier in those deeper, more grounded notes, like your vanilla and your almond. And it's a little bit more cozy and rich compared to the EDT and it lasts longer. So I do prefer the EDP over the EDT. And this one, sometimes I think I want to get rid of, so, like that would be my second time decluttering this. So I know better by now <laughs> that if I let it go, I will probably want to bring it back. So I'm not going to do that, but this one, sometimes I think I don't need it, but this is a, um, basically a vanilla almondy orange creamsicle kind of a fragrance, but with a sexy twist to it. And yeah, I'm sometimes I get sick of this one, but honestly, you guys, it is such an easy one. It's just a no brainer, sweet, easy reach, feminine, sexy, grab and go, a little bit youthful. Sometimes I feel it's a little immature for me at this point in my life. Um, but yeah, this one is an easy reach and you can see that there is a bit of a dent in the bottle, not a huge dent, but, um, it is one of those ones that if I don't know what to wear, I do. Oh, there you can see the dent better, but yeah, if I don't know what to wear, I will often reach for this one and it's just, it's just really enjoyable. So another one that is a very easy reach for me in the summertime. I actually haven't reached for this one yet because we're just getting into summer. I feel like where I live, we didn't really have spring. We just literally went from uh, winter to summer. So yeah. And, and I don't wear perfume every single day. I know some people think it's crazy and sometimes I'm influenced when I'm talking to friends or other people, I'm influenced that I should wear perfume every single day. But the reality is I just don't like, I'm not going to wear a perfume like this that costs $150 when I'm just at home, like cleaning house and doing laundry, I'm just probably not going to do it. But if I do go out to the gym to run errands, to go shopping, to do whatever, um, go out for the day or something, I definitely will put it on. But this is a great one for the summertime. Um, Gabrielle Essence from Chanel. I also kind of want to revisit the original Gabrielle. It's such a classy perfume. Both of them are so classy. The original Gabrielle is a little bit more in that floral musk direction. It's a little bit more mature, whereas Gabrielle Essence is more of a fruity fragrance. This one is a little more youthful. I honestly think that every woman needs a Chanel, every woman and man needs a Chanel in their collection. It is just so beautiful. It's classy, it's elegant, it's effortless, it's not overpowering, it's not headache inducing, it smells like Chanel, it smells expensive, it smells sophisticated. I was actually watching a perfume video recently and it was a um, Parisian woman and she was talking about what perfumes women wear um, in Paris or in France, like what French women wear. And all of them love Chanel and I can totally understand why because it is just, it has that Parisian elegance to it. It just smells very sophisticated and that is the vibe that I really like. Um, and Chanel just does it better than anyone. I love Chanel. I actually have been tempted to bring back a version of number five. I wouldn't mind the number five premiere or number five low or something like that. Um, I love Chanel number five. I have the Chanel number five hand lotion and you guys, Nothing is as elegant as number five. I'm, I don't care who you talk to or what people say, even though number five is dated and it smells a little more mature, you just can't beat the timeless elegance of number five. <laughs> so I kind of want to bring it back. Sometimes I think about bringing back Coco Mademoiselle as well, but that one was very strong and sometimes I would get a headache from it. So I'm not as likely to bring that one back, but um, Gabrielle Essence is like that happy medium for me. It's just Chanel enough to still have that timeless elegance, but also it's modern and it's kind of youthful and uh, flirty in a sense at the same time. Another perfume that is very new to my collection and I haven't worn it a ton, but you guys, I think this one is going to become a solid, easy reach. I wore it again the other day and I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. This is such a beautiful fragrance. This is Tiara from House of Siage. I did take off the cap because the cap is ridiculously heavy, um, but this is such a beautiful fragrance. This is a, a peony, a peony, caramel fragrance, I believe. Actually, I think there's vanilla in here. There's no caramel, but the peony and the orange that's in here and the vanilla come together to create almost this caramelic feeling. And 
I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just gorgeous. I think that there's cinnamon in here as well, although I don't really pick up the cinnamon, but this is just a stunning, unusual take on a peony. And I've told you guys before, but I feel like peony is one of those flowers that is universal, universally pleasing. I have never met anyone who said they don't like peony. A lot of people don't like orange blossom. A lot of people don't like rose. A lot of people don't like frangipani or tiara flower. A lot of people don't like tuberose or gardenia or magnolia. People have a hard time with flowers, okay? Flowers are difficult <laughs> to get universally right. But peony is, I think, one of the most mass-pleasing floral notes in a fragrance. And this is a just a beautiful peony fragrance. I do not think you can go wrong with this one. This one was gifted to me from House of Siage for full dis for full disclosure. Um, but if you can get this at a discount, like I would never buy this perfume without a discount because they're expensive. But the House of Siage perfumes, you guys, there's some that are so beautiful. I've actually started wearing Benevolence as well. I have a little um, travel size of Benevolence and I love that fragrance. I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I'm on the hunt for a discounted bottle. So yeah, this is one that I just love. I love the way it smells. It's very delicate. It's pretty. It's feminine. It's simple. It's enjoyable. It's kind of sweet. Yeah, it's just, it's just stunning. I can't say enough good things about it. So even though I haven't worn this one a ton, I think this one is going to become part of my regular rotation. And I was thinking that if I called down my collection, if I cut my collection down to um, 10, this I think would have to be in it because that is how much I have grown to love this fragrance. So, and another fragrance that is a pretty easy reach for me, although I haven't worn it in a while, but when I do reach for something of this style, this one's a very easy reach for me. This is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. I did remove the cap because again, it is very heavy, but you can actually see where the dent is in this bottle. You can see that I'm at about, I would say 90%. So I have actually taken this perfume with me on vacation as my vacation scent. This is just such a stunning, elegant, easy, effortless, non-challenging fragrance. Something that I have found is that out of all of my very expensive perfumes, for example, Oud for Greatness, um, what else? YSL Baby Cat even, um, Maison Sierre Ombre Magique, all of my expensive fragrances that are uh, very unique and different, they're kind of challenging. Like they're not a perfume I can reach for all the time. I have to wear them for the right occasion at the right time. And for the right reason it has to be a whole vibe. This perfume doesn't have to be a vibe, although it kind of is a vibe, but like I can wear this perfume anytime. I can wear this for a date. I, the reason I don't reach for this more often and wear it even on days off and like days when I'm doing nothing or just going to the gym is because it's so pricey and I don't want to burn through the bottle and then have to buy another one because it's kind of expensive, but this is a beautiful vanilla iris cardamom fragrance. If you guys haven't heard of this one, I have hyped this one to no end and I still love this perfume so much today, just as much today as when I first received it. This was an instant hit. Uh, an instant love, and I still love it just as much today as when I first got it. But this one just to me is feminine. It's feminine, it's soft, it's elegant, it smells luxurious, it smells rich. Um, it doesn't have the greatest performance. It could reach out further and it could leave a better trail, it could be stronger. Um, but the scent itself is amazing. I do feel like I have to overspray it. That's the only downside. I don't know. Maybe I don't like, I wish that people would come up to you and tell you anytime they smelled your perfume, that would be great because otherwise I don't even know if people can smell it. Um, but this one's just amazing. I love it so much. Um, it fits the vibes of an expensive luxury vacation, but you could also wear it for date night. This could be your signature scent as well. It's soft enough. You could wear it to work. It's not offensive. It's not headache inducing, it's just a very not challenging expensive fragrance. But yeah, it definitely is one of the softer ones out of my entire collection. In comparison to Ombre Magique, Ombre Magique blows this one out of the water in terms of strength and sillage, but I find this scent profile to be more everyday wearable. Ombre Magique is more like literally a special occasion. Like I don't think I could wear Ombre Magique unless it was a special occasion. Like I'm getting engaged or some sort of a formal event or some sort of a big deal where I'm dressing up and whatever. This one you could wear a lot like more often. So this one I think I would say is a fairly easy reach and I do really enjoy wearing it. 
So you guys, excuse the cat hair on my bed if you see any, but those are my easiest reach perfumes. Does that mean that if I was to cut down my collection and keep only 10 perfumes, does that mean that this is more than 10, isn't it? So <laughs> obviously that wouldn't work. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I have 12 easy reaches right here in front of me. And I have other perfumes in my closet, obviously, that I absolutely love. And they're not super, they're not as easy as these, but it doesn't mean I would want to get rid of them. So it's kind of like, you know, the more that I think about it, the more that I think 20 perfumes is the sweet spot. I was talking to my friend and actually I should I should credit her with saying that. She was the one who said that 20 perfumes is a sweet spot. And I think she's right because with 20 perfumes, you have your, you know, your top five or 10 that are your most easy reaches. They could be your signature scents. People would recognize you by the scent. And then you've got other ones for if you want some variety or you have a special occasion or whatever the case is. But yeah, so these are my easiest reach of fragrances, you guys. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you very soon in my next one. Bye for now.